So after last week looking at standard deviation, we're going to go further now and looking at what's called the t-test. So you've already looked at the mean and how to calculate standard deviation. The t-test uses both of these as a statistical test to look at correlation. So what does a t-test do? Well, a t-test is used to see if there's a significant difference or not between two means. Let me give you an example from last week on standard deviation. Well, do you remember we had green berries and we had plants with yellow and green berries and we were measuring the mean mass of berries and seeing if there's a difference between the two means. We looked at this using bar charts and getting the idea that here, if you've got the range, the standard deviation for the green leaves and the standard de deviation for the yellow leaves, if there is a clear difference between the two, then there should be a significant difference in the means. Whereas if the standard deviation bars overlap, then you can actually say that there is no significant difference between the two. What we do is we create a null hypothesis and then we use a t-test to decide whether there is significance or not, which is actually much more accurate than just looking at the standard deviation bars. So a t-test is used to see if there's a significant difference or not between two means. And I love this example to show you how we use it. So supposing five black dog hairs were found on the clothes of a victim of a mugging at a crime scene. What they do is they measured the thickness of the five hairs, and that is sample one. Now they then found a suspect, and they knew that the suspect had a dog, a black dog. And what they did, they took five hairs from the black dog and measured the thickness of them, and this was sample two. And what we want to try and prove is whether there is a significant difference between sample one and sample two. If there's a significant difference between the two, then the hairs found on the victim do not belong to the hairs from the dog of the suspect. Therefore, the suspect can be cleared. We have to use this equation, which looks really frightening to start with, but once you get used to using it, it's absolutely fine. And you get this equation in your exam, so you don't have to remember it. You just have to understand what each of the symbols mean and be able to use it. To calculate the t-test, what the t number, what you need to do is you need to take the mean of the first sample minus the mean of the second sample. Then this says you do the square root of the standard deviation of the first sample squared divided by the number of samples for the first sample plus the standard deviation of your second sample squared divided by the number of samples in the second sample. What would our null hypothesis be? Well, a null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the dog hairs found on the victim and the hairs of the suspect dog. If that was the case, then it's more likelihood that the suspect was there doing the mugging. Now, first of all, we work out our t-value using the t-test. And of course, we'll need this equation because we've got to work out the standard deviations of both samples like we did last week. And once we've got that, we have to work out what's called the degrees of freedom. Now, last week on the standard deviation, you did the number minus one, didn't you? Well, this week, we've got two samples. So it's both of the sample sizes added together, minus two for the two different samples. So that works out as five plus five minus two, which is eight degrees of freedom. Now, what we can then do is look at what's called the critical value. And there are different values for different degrees of freedom. And there's different values for different confidence levels. So let me give you an example. We're going to take a confidence level of five. So the value for eight degrees of freedom with a significance level of five is 2.31. So what on earth does that mean? Well, if our T value is less than the critical value, which is 2.31, then we can say that there is no difference between the two samples and the null hypothesis is accepted. If the t-value is greater than 2.31, then there is a significant difference between the two samples. And we can be confident to 95%. You notice that some scientists, for even more proof, 
want to go to a 1% significant level, which means you're 99% sure that that's more difficult to prove and the number's higher. So I'm going to now show you a video of me taking you through this first question. Watch carefully my working out as I take you through it. So what I'm going to do first is to write out the equation for the t-test and the equation for standard deviation. Next, I'm going to record the two sample sizes, n1 is 5 and n2 is also 5. I'm now going to calculate my mean for sample 1 by adding them up and then dividing by 5. This gives me 49.2. I'm then going to do exactly the same to calculate the mean of the second sample, which works out at 37.4. So next thing to do is to work out the standard deviation of sample 1. So we've got to add up the sum of the squares of the difference between the sample numbers and the mean. So for the first one, I'm going to do 46 minus the mean, which is 49.2. The second piece of data in sample 1 is 57. So I'm going to work out the difference between that and the mean, 57 minus 49.2, and that gives me 7.8. I'm going to repeat that for all other data in sample 1. I then have to divide that by n minus 1, which is 5 minus 1, which is 4. Finishing off the calculation gives us a value of 7.46 for the standard deviation of sample 1. I now need to work out the standard deviation for sample 2, doing it in exactly the same method. So my first data point in sample 2 is 31. So the difference between that and the mean will be 31 minus 37.4, which gives us 6.4 and then we square it in the equation. I then complete that for the rest of the data in sample two and get a standard deviation of 7.30 for sample two. So now with all that information, I can finally work out my T value using the above equation. So I've got the mean of sample one, which is 49.2 minus the mean of sample two, which is 37.4. That's all divided by the square root of the first sample standard deviation of 7.46 squared, divided by the number of data in the sample, which was 5, plus the second sample standard deviation, which was 7.3 squared, divided by the number of data in that sample, which is 5. So save risking calculator error, I'm going to put these values in and simplify the equation again before I do a final calculation. We can now input these numbers into the calculator. Which gives us a T value of 2.53. Notice you've got a very clear structure for the examiner to mark. I then need to calculate the degrees of freedom which is equal to the number in the first sample plus the number in the second sample minus 2. So that's 5 plus 5 minus 2 equals 8. So next we have to look up the critical value for a 5% significance at a degree of freedom of 8, and that is 2.31 for 8 degrees of freedom. So this means t is equal to 2.53, which is greater than 2.31, the critical value, so we can reject the null hypothesis. So we can conclude there is a significant difference between the two samples of dog hair, and we're 95% confident that the hairs do not belong to the same dog. So I hope that video helped to see how to set it out. And just to remind you, our degrees of freedom were eight. Our 5% significant critical value is 2.31. And our t-value was 2.53, which is greater than 2.31. So that means that we reject our null hypothesis because the t-value is more than the critical value. So we've rejected our null hypothesis. And so our new hypothesis is there is a significant difference between the dog hairs found on the victim and the hairs on the suspect's dog. And we're confident to 95%. So let's have a look at one more example and show you how you can record this in a sort of table to help you. And this is the way that quite often they will give you the information in an exam question and ask you to fill out the table to support you in calculating the t-test. So some species of bacteria cause disease of the stomach. 
but most are killed by acid juices produced by the stomach lining, so that pH kills them. However, there are some species of bacteria that secrete the enzyme urease. This enzyme catalyzes a reaction that produces ammonia, which neutralizes those gastric juices, and that means the bacteria can survive in stomach acid. Now, a student believes that just a small increase in temperature reduces the effect of the enzyme urease. And so she records her results in the table opposite and wants to know whether her findings are significant or not. So she's changed the temperature just by one degree. Now, her null hypothesis is there is no difference between the two different means or there's no difference between the two temperatures. She's going to have to use the t-test to test this. She's going to have to first work out the standard deviation for each sample. I'm going to show you in this video how we can use this table of results to help us collate the information to end up calculating that. So first I'm going to record the amount of data in each sample. Notice one's five and the other six. I'm then going to calculate my mean for each of them, which gives a mean of 48.8 degrees for the first sample and 54.3 degrees for the second. Because in this example we've already been given the standard deviation, that saves us having to calculate this, so all we need to do is to work out the standard deviation squared and record it in the table for each sample. Next, I'm going to work out the standard deviation squared divided by the number in the sample for both 36.5 degrees and 37.5 degrees. Find I can put this data into the equation I've been given to calculate the value of t. So I've got the mean of 36.5 degrees minus the mean of 37.5 degrees divided by the square root of s1 squared divided by m1 plus s2 squared divided by n2. Putting the values into the calculator and ignoring the negative signs, we get a t-value of 0.36. So our degrees of freedom this time of 5 plus 6 minus 2, which is 9. So looking at the critical value table for degrees of freedom 9 and a 5% significance level, that gives us a value of 2.26. Our calculated t value equals 0.36, which is much less than 2.26. So the null hypothesis is accepted. So we can be 95% confident that there's no significant difference between the enzyme reactions. So the small change or increase in temperature has no effect on the enzyme urease. So in conclusion, I hope that those two examples have helped you understand how we can use the t-test and how you might be able to write the answers out in an exam. What I want you to do now is to go away and practice all the t-tests with the worked answers that I've put on with this video.